Which is the better buy? Aaron Rakers from Wells Fargo joins us now to discuss. Or, Aaron, do you pick up both of them? Yeah, we actually like both. Um, we, we think both, you know, they're, they're a little bit different stories. I think NVIDIA is much more of a deepening platform narrative. Uh, you know, you talked about Metaverse, their Omniverse platform, the data center strategy continues to deepen. Their ecosystem continues to broaden 30 million uh, develop, you know, downloads of their CUDA platform stack uh, from a software perspective. And then AMD is, you know, what we saw yesterday was just this expansion of their data center uh, product portfolio and, and, and confidence that this company continues to be a solid market share taker uh, in the uh, data center, the server, uh, CPU and GPU markets. Right, so we're constantly talking about NVIDIA and its proximity to the metaverse, but the recent announcement was about its partnership with Luminar, and I wonder, um, is, is this the big, another big play for NVIDIA? Is it actually you know, one of the better ways to play the EV and autonomous driving market? Yeah, yeah. so I, I think that's definitely a, a longer-term growth driver. Our, our view is that that becomes more material as we look out to 2024 Longer than the metaverse? Uh, they've talked... Yeah, I, I do believe. I, I actually think that, you know, for them, they've talked about an $8 billion pipeline of opportunities in the auto uh, area uh, over the next couple of years. We think Metaverse actually starts, or their Omniverse platform uh, starts to become a revenue contributor even as we move into next year. You know, today they announced that they've, they've, got, they've gotten over 70,000 downloads uh, of their Omniverse platform. They're working with companies like Adobe, Autodesk, 500 enterprise evaluations underway. Uh, so we do actually believe that Omniverse and, you know, that platform strategy starts to become more visible into, into 2022. Aaron, how are you modeling the metaverse? I consider myself a metaverse skeptic. Gaming, I understand. Data center AI, I understand. This metaverse narrative and concept that's been brought up, I'm not sure how uh, financial analysts can model it because some of it seems to be a collection of ideas in AR and VR that some of these companies have been talking about for years that just really haven't reached escape velocity. But now people have gotten excited about them because the label metaverse has been stuck on them. Yeah, I, I think it's difficult. I, you know, I think one of the things that you have to consider is I think one, you know, metaverse is somewhat loosely defined. I think it's, it's different depending on what company you're looking at and who, you know, has their positioning for that opportunity. I think when you look at NVIDIA, you know, they really want to be a platform guy that enables the content creators, right? So allowing Adobe software, Autodesk, Bentley software, Blender, et cetera, I think they've got 30 different software ISV partners to allow their software stack to work on top of Omniverse to really enable that collaborative 3D design, you know, virtual world. And so, you know, the metrics that have been thrown around, they haven't given a defined TAM opportunity, but they've talked about actually today uh, 40 million uh, content creators and designers uh, as an opportunity set for them to uh, subscribe a, a subscription software license model with. Uh, and you start to kind of run the numbers, you know, at the low end, that's $9,000 per year on a base of 40 million opportunity. That could be a big number. And, and importantly, an adjacent incremental revenue stream that would be recurring in nature for the company. Aaron, thanks for your insights. We'll talk to you again soon. Aaron Rakers, Wells Fargo. Yeah, thank you.